why do carbs have such a bad name how much of carbs is it too much is it too less how much do we require so it's it's a double edged sword with carbs too less of carbs might not be the best excluding in the case of a kid kid is any diet and too much of carbs is also not good in fact too much of carbs uh, leads to a lot of disease there are everyday techniques that uh, our viewers can can use but uh, incorporating these techniques will make sure that the spike we get is not very high so if the spike is not very high the crash will will be less Today we're going to be talking about an interesting topic carbohydrate metabolism. I recently learned that India is now the leading country in type 2 diabetes. I don't think that that is something that we should be proud about. By the end of this series we will have actionable steps and frameworks to prevent and also manage existing disorders. And um the hope is to help you and to equip you with the knowledge to control your mental health your body composition fertility and also may it may prevent uh, disorders like alzheimers type 2 diabetes pcod and also guys disclaimer this is based on our perspective i'm going through something personally and uh, everything that i talk about i personally practice myself alkesh has helped many many people manage their health better so this podcast is not sponsored by a particular brand or a particular product this is purely meant to help you guys from just sharing valuable information and that is what we hope and seek to do so let's get to it alkesh what is carbohydrates what is it used for uh, first of all thank you for that lovely introduction sam So carbohydrates are basically something that we eat on a daily basis all the sugars starches that we get from bread fruits all the cereals and everything that we eat on a daily basis the primary function of carbohydrates in the body is to provide a uh, energy to us and each and every cell in the body has a receptor for the carbohydrate to be utilized so why is carb why do carbs have such a bad name um so it's it's a double edged sword with carbs too less of carbs might not be the best excluding uh, in the case of a kid ketogenic diet and too much of carbs is also not good in fact too much of carbs leads to a lot of disease the ones that we touched upon but carbs is essential for the functioning of a regular individual who can't omit carbs as a part of their diet uh because you know day to day life they we have to socialize we have to uh, work and we have to live a normal life and for them it is almost inevitable to omit out carbs for them this information is going to be really hel- helpful none of us can omit carbs like i mean yeah yeah there are uh, certain individuals who have resorted to to that but those are very few uh and it has held them out to and just to understand how basic carbs is for us like right now i am if i'm talking to you my brain is using carbs glycogen uh, my muscle motor units are using gly- glycogen i am able to comprehend information because at this point in time body is utilizing carbs to even engage in this conversation so it is that primary to us so it is not something that we can evade but it is definitely something that we can better our relationship with for sure yeah i th- i think that we can certainly better our relationship with carbs and i hope by the end of this particular episode people understand carbs and how useful it is and how to probably get it right i think that it was an uphill climb for me as well for a while to get how much of carbs is it too much is it too less because sometimes i had hypoglycemia at night um, and that was when i was having two less carbs mm. so um, i think that it's important to have the right quantity of carbs mm. so when you're saying it's used you're using it for your brain your muscle could you explain that a little deeper the experts are divided on this that carbohydrates might be the preferred source of fuel that the body has and we have come to this conclusion because as soon as the body is carb deprived and in a state of ketosis for a longer duration of time it it doesn't take very long for the body to switch back to uh, carbs so that's why we have an understanding that carbs could be the preferred source of uh, fuel for the body and also we have mechanism within the body even if you are not having carbs body can convert 
amino acids and proteins in, in, into carbs. So there are various defense mechanism built within the bo body so that the supply of glucose that we have is steady and constant throughout. For example, if we are stressed, uh, we'll see an insulin spike always, even though if we had not had, ca had carbs. Right. Uh, so the workout that we do is, um, is also stressful for us. And since brain can't distinguish between an actual threat and a perceived threat, threat as soon as the sugar level goes down, the body harnesses gly glycogen from other sources in the body and we get a spike so that we get through that event, stressor e event, as smoothly as we can. So, how much do we require? Yeah, so that's a great question. Now, how much carbs we require is different for different individual. It will depend upon many factors like your age, your gender, uh, the phase of the monthly cycle that you are in, your metabolism, and there are other cofactors to, to it, it too. But one thing we know for sure is that uh, if, you, if your activity level is high, you can definitely take higher amount of carbs. And if you have more muscle mass, then definitely your ability to metabolize carbs is definitely more than a person who has lesser amount of muscle mass. Why is the case that we'll be understanding in a later episode where we specifically talk about type 2 diabetes. But one thing we know for sure is that uh, the activity level and the muscle mass uh, determines how much or how little carbs we can have. But having said that, uh, we still don't have the answer, right? How much carbs that yeah. we need to actually have. So rather than thinking the amount of carbs, uh, we can, it will be more benefit of us if we think that the insulin spike or the sugar spike that we get after ingesting carbs, that has to be minimized. So body has an inherent need of maintaining the blood sugar level between 80 to 1. 20, that's the state of homeostasis that, that we have. Um, if it goes beyond 120, uh, the higher it goes, the more out of homeostasis the body is. It is a source of inflammation to us and body just wants to get rid of that excess sugar that we have in, in the blood and it does that by raising the in, insulin that we have. And once we have uh, the sugar spike, it leads to multiple things. For example, if we have a sugar spike that will lead to a space of a brain fog, that means our ability to process information would not be as high. Um, there is a lack of mental clarity. And also, when the spike is high, a higher spike is accompanied with a higher dip. Hmm. So once we eat something that is higher in glycemic level, we get a high, we get a dip, and then there is an en energy crash. Right. An energy crash would be a state where we are feeling not great mood wise. Some people also get headache. Some people feel low. And You're saying after they eat something that raises their sh insulin, like that spikes insulin. Yeah. There's also an immediate crash. Yes. Okay. And that uh, state of crash is also a stressor to the body and uh, our mood is dysregulated. We are fe fe feeling low and in that state, just to uh, get the blood sugar level to the appropriate level that the body wants it to be at, we get cravings. Mm -hmm. And we always crave for something sweet or something that is going to get the blood glucose again back up. Right. So I was wearing the glucose monitor and um, just to check my spikes. And I realized that even though my meal was extremely healthy, there were some, I don't know, they were unusual spikes, which shouldn't really happen with the kind of food that I was eating. So I realized that just by switching the food from, eat, you know, switching the food around, like eating fiber, eating my vegetables first, eating my protein second, and then the carbs kind of reduced the levels, kind of reduced that, you know, that, spike up straight it, 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 much, it was much more um, normal and much more uh, there wasn't any like great spikes so mm -hmm. why was that yeah so there are everyday techniques that our viewers can can use yeah in order to manage the in insulin spike right. 
even though the food we are having is same in the quantity as well but uh, incorporating these techniques will make sure that the spike we get is not very high so if the spike is not very high the crash will be less so what we would want is to have a steady supply of uh, sugar mm. in our blood stream and the more we do that the more mood stabilization will have the more the more stabilized mental cl- clarity will have the more stable energy levels we will have Mm. and that is one of those uh, uh techniques and diving into those techniques the number one technique uh, or the number one tip rather rather because this is not one one of those techniques that we'll be talking about is the food choices that we have mm-hmm. if we eat food from whole foods uh less processed food less processed uh, sugar and all, all those things um we are more likely to have a stable supply of sugar within our blood so food sequencing is an food import- sequencing yeah that yeah. that's the term so food sequencing is an important part of managing the insulin spike so let's just say i have in front of me my fiber my carb and my protein and if i eat the carb first and protein and fiber following that will be getting a higher spike right but i eat my fiber protein and fat first and follow that with the carbs even though the food and the quantity is the same the spike will be less but let me ask you something so like now we we kind of uh, oh i get home food and there's separate vegetables and separate protein and separate carbs but then you know if you're grabbing like a sandwich that has the carb and uh, the chick the protein in between and also the veggies in between and you're taking a big bite of all three combined what does one do then for that spike Yeah. which let's be honest most most people on the go this is what they eat yeah so uh, a if we eat a uh, processed food it is going to give us but spike. what if we add a salad before the yeah. before the sandwich yeah. would that help yeah, with the spike adding adding a uh, salad before the sandwich is definitely going to help mm. there are few other things that we can incorporate to cut that spike uh, for example having apple cider vinegar before the meal or along with the meal even we uh, speak about meal. apple cider vinegar a lot maybe we should actually <laughs> invest in an apple cider vinegar brand <laughs> yeah <laughs> come out with it because we really really we really really love apple cider vinegar don't we yeah 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 and also a slight disclaimer in order to properly utilize apple cider vinegar our digestive function needs to be on point if somebody is going through bouts of uh, higher acidity within their gut and uh, they have uh, they feel burning sensations when they take something uh, acidic they need to fix that first uh-huh. before going to so if you if you're feeling uneasy and if you're feeling if there's a burning you stop using apple cider vinegar that's that's your cue to stop to not use yeah until you fix your gut yeah so the mucosal lining of the digestive tract needs to be fixed first mm-hmm. and then apple cider vinegar would be of higher use to us so apple cider vinegar will have something called as acetic acid and the way it works is that uh, it works in a two fold uh, kind kind of a way so if we have apple cider vinegar along with the meal it slows down the process of converting carbs into glycogen so there is a slower release of carbs in the mm-hmm. blood stream mm-hmm. that's number 1 and the second thing is that it signals the muscle to uptake more glycogen mm. into the muscle mm. so a the which release which is what is we slow. want yeah we want that so yeah. number 1 the release is slow and the number second thing is uh, whatever release there is some of it is going into the muscle as well then it would have gone with without the ap- apple cider vinegar mm-hmm. so it works in a two fold kind of of a way okay and so then is that how i build muscle and get lean mass and stuff like that if uh, if my muscle is absorbing more of the glycogen so uh, so it will be not will not be building muscles but we our muscles will definitely appear to be fuller, fuller. Mm. and when we work out we will have more ready energy right right to work 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 out So another uh, I know that everybody is not going to walk around with a glucose monitor so I'm just going to uh, share some of my experiences that I've had with it one being that I didn't understand why there was unusual spikes uh, because I was eating good food but then when I sequenced when I did the food sequencing and changed around the um, pattern and I realized that it was 
not it wasn't spiking so that was a valuable tip another thing i realized that when i um, i don't usually sleep in the afternoon yeah. but um, i remember this day I was extremely tired so i ate and i slept immediately and when i woke up the spike was just like off the charts and it stayed there for like 3 hours yeah. and i realized that sleeping right after a meal is not good which most of us do you yeah. know like uh, we always try to sneak in that 20 minute nap after food so it's not really good is it yeah so in order to so that's an, another tip that you would want to give our viewers is that if we include an activity after the meal mm. uh most of the case we recommend walk. our clients to walk uh then that make sure that the insulin spike is blunt a very interesting thing that has been uh, understood in the res- recent researches is that if you cannot walk but if you can do calf raises really yeah that also allows us to reduce the spike from the uh, from the food that we get calf raises calf raises yeah so how many calf raises um so it's like just saying how 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 many steps so let's just say even if you do five calf raises it's better than doing no none no walking yeah, yeah okay okay so right now re- recently when i took an international flight uh the flight meals are not the bestest <laughs> yeah. in terms of the macronutrient ratio that they had and it is not very feasible to walk the length of the plane back and forth so i was standing and, and i was doing a lot of calf raises and the sugar response is more controlled when i did that so if you are somebody who does not have the time to walk i think calf raise can also be a great hack that they can implement in order to blunt the sugar response that they have yeah and you don't need space you can just do it anywhere right is yeah. calf raises okay this is something even i'm going to uh, i'm going to try as well yeah we understand how we can prevent these insulin spikes but why should we care so much about this this why should we care so much about insulin spikes yeah uh that's really important for everyone to know that like we discussed the state of homeostasis is between 80 to 120 and as soon as there is a spike uh the body has to get rid of that spike because uh, we are in an in- inflammatory state then and uh, we are more prone to infections because the sugar content in the blood is high that's why it is difficult for a diabetic to heal a wound uh oh. then a non diabetic individual so in a way our immune system is protecting us from that spike and the way in which it handles is that it shuttles it to different parts of the body liver muscle gly- uh, gly- glycogen and the last one is the adipose tissue or the fat that we have so in a way we gain fat because we have an excess amount of sugar mm-hmm. in the body and our body wants to pro- pro- protect us from that inflammatory state and it shuttles it into the uh, adipose tissues uh, that we have so if we incorporate all the things that we talked about and we blunt the insulin response the amount of fat that we store would be less because it is a steady supply of sugar in the blood rather than a spike and a crash okay so with that we end our first episode and uh, looking forward to learning more on this subject in our next episode yeah.